I'm going to fulfill a request today, which I don't do too often, but this idea interested me. Someone contacted me through my website and asked me to do Jewish rye bread, and I like baking bread. So I did some research and I found one recipe that intrigued me because among the ingredients is sour pickle juice. I had never heard of using sour pickle juice before. It's the juice that comes in a jar of pickles. This is kosher dill sandwich slices. They're sliced dill pickles. I like that idea because water has no flavor. And sometimes I look at a recipe and think, what can I substitute for the water that would give the recipe more flavor? I went online and researched pickle juice, and there are websites that say don't pour the juice down the drain. When the pickles are gone, save it, because you can use it to ramp up something like potato salad. See, that kind of idea appeals to me. So that's what I want to make today. I want to make Jewish rye bread. I have here two cups. 10 ounces by weight, 283 grams of bread flour. I'm gonna put about half of this right now, roughly half, in my bowl. I'm using the bowl of my stand mixer, which, oh, and by the way, this is one cup, four and a half ounces, 128 grams of dark rye flour, again, about half. I was gonna say, I never know whether to use my stand mixer or not, because if I do things in the stand mixer, people say, do it by hand. We don't all have stand mixers. If I do it by hand, they say, you got a stand mixer, use that. We want to see you use that, whatever. And then I have one cup, which is 237 milliliters of warm water. This is one quarter cup, 60 milliliters of oil. You can use vegetable oil, corn oil, canola oil. I happen to have some safflower oil, so I'm using that. And then one quarter cup, 60 milliliters of my pickle juice. And then I want to stir this together to form a batter. And then I have here three tablespoons of dry potato flakes. That's from a package of instant potatoes two tablespoons of whole caraway seeds. And then I have here one and a half tablespoons of sugar. This is raw sugar or demerara sugar. The re recipe called for it, but you could probably just use regular granulated sugar for this. They sell dem demerara sugar down the street, so I bought it. And then finally the yeast, two and a half teaspoons to one tablespoon of dry yeast or one packet of yeast would be fine in this. I'm gonna stir all this in until it's blended well. Okay, that looks good right there. I'm gonna cover this with plastic wrap and let this sit for minimum 30 minutes. That resting will give the flour a chance to build up some gluten chains. It'll also mature the flavor a little bit. Once that's done, then I can add the remainder of my flour, my two flours, to make my bread dough. My batter has had time to relax now for 30 minutes. I put the remaining of my bread flour and the dark rye flour in this plastic container along with one and a half teaspoons of salt. A while back I cut this at an angle because it makes it easier to pour it into my stand mixer. So with my stand mixer running using a dough hook, I'm gonna start adding my flour a little at a time to build up my dough. My ingredients now have come together into a dough. This is when I start looking to see how I'm going to need to adjust my dough. There are a lot of factors that affect dough. The moisture that's already in the flour, how absorbent the flour is, humidity and temperature in the room. Sometimes you need to add a little bit more moisture, sometimes you need to add more flour. What I like to see is the dough sticking a little bit to the bottom of the bowl, but pulling away from the sides. This is still a little bit too sticky. So I have some flour here on the side. I'm gonna be adding maybe a tablespoon at the most at a time to get the consistency that I want. It did take one well-rounded tablespoon of flour to get this dough the way I want it. And by the way, halfway through, I did use a scraper to scrape the bowl down. Now I'm gonna knead this in the machine for six to eight minutes. Okay, the kneading is done. What I'm going to do next is 
See, that's just a little bit sticky, which is what I want. It should be a little sticky. Sticking to the bottom of the bowl somewhat. Oh, this feels wonderful. Okay, I'm going to clean this bowl out. And then I'm going to grease this bowl and I'm going to use this to let the dough rise in. Okay, so I clean out my bowl. I greased it with butter, pushed my dough into the bottom, coated it lightly with butter. You could do that with oil. Cover the bowl with plastic wrap. I'm going to actually use one of my silicone bowl covers. And I'm going to set this in a warm place to rise for about an hour, maybe an hour and a half. So now there is my dough after my first rise. Look how wonderfully that has risen up. If I had made enough for two loaves, this would be well above the top of this bowl. I'm going to take this out. Now, you can shape this into like a long log sort of thing. Put it in a bread pan. What I'm going to do with this is, after I punch it down and knead it a little bit, I'm going to pinch it together on the bottom. And I want to shape it into kind of um, an oblong, sort of like that, because what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it on a baking sheet that I've lined with parchment paper, like so. I'm going to cover this with plastic and I'm going to let this rise for another hour, maybe an hour and a half. My dough here has been rising for nearly an hour. It's risen beautifully. I have in the meantime been heating my oven to 350 degrees Fahrenheit, which is about 175 degrees Celsius. Before I put this in the oven, I'm going to cut. Let's see, how do I want to do this? I'm just going to cut through the top a little bit. This is for what's called oven spring. When bread goes into the oven for the first 10 minutes or so, it goes through a rapid rise. And this is like expansion joints in the bread that will allow for a little bit more rising. I'm going to put this in the oven for 30 to 35 minutes. I want to cook it until it's done. I'm going to check with a digital thermometer when the internal temperature is 190 degrees Fahrenheit, which is roughly 90 degrees centigrade or higher, the bread is done. Here is my bread, hot from the oven. I actually left that in there for 40 minutes because I wanted to see a little bit more browning. Now let's see, I'm going to transfer this It'll be easier to do it this way. There we go. There it is. Now comes the hard part. Waiting while this cools. I'm going to let this cool thoroughly and then I'll be able to cut into it and see what it tastes like. My bread now has cooled down to the point where it's okay to start cutting this. I want to see what it looks like on the inside. Feels tender. Beautiful. Nice, beautiful rye bread crumb inside. You can see the caraway seeds. Can't wait to see what this tastes like. So there is my piece of Jewish rye bread. You know, It has that little bit of pickle flavor to it, but it also has those caraway seed, that caraway seed flavor in it. That is quite good. Mm. Excuse me. <clears throat> I'm going to go enjoy my Jewish rye bread. For a printable PDF copy of this recipe with step-by-step -step photographs, visit my website, mobilehomegourmet.com, and look on the home page or in the recipe archive.